Hi there, my name is Damien, and in today's demonstration, I'm on the Microsoft Power Platform Forum, and I'm looking at a couple of arrays that need to be repurposed. So in this particular scenario, you can see here we've got an array one, which contains just the key name and the name of the individual. And we have two of those, John and Jane. And then in our second array, we have an example of John appearing once and Jane appearing three times, but with unique numbers, a home, a work, and a mobile number. So what we're trying to do here is we're looking to combine these two to form this desired output at the top, which is a single object for each user containing their home phone, their work phone, and their mobile phone. Now the requirements are such that we don't use any variables. We want to try and enable concurrency because ultimately we want to try and process 3,000 records as fast as possible. Today I'm going to show you how to avoid and apply to each entirely and hopefully produce a flow that creates this array within a matter of seconds. Without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here we are in Power Automate. And the first thing that I want to do is to create a compose action. And that compose action is going to store my sample array. Now, when we looked at this call, we saw that there was the, the array number two and array number one. I'm actually going to show you also how you can create this first array without the need to copy it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly rename this to array so we can recognize it. And then inserting a select action. I am going to create an array that just contains the names from the first array there. So the input is based on this compose action, which is our array. And for the map, rather than using this traditional key value uh, screen, I'm going to click on this button here, which will switch it into text mode and allow me to insert a single item. So I'm going to go into my expression builder and type in the expression item with the open close brackets, a question mark, a square bracket, single quotes, and then we're going to put in the key name, which is name. And so if we have a quick look at this array here, you can see that the key name is, is name, and we're going to use that in our expression here so that we can retrieve all four instances of this name. So now what we need to do is we need to get the unique names from the above. And this is where we use another compose action. And in this compose action, we're going to use a, an expression known as union. And by combining the results of the select, a state, select statement above, we can get the unique values. So switching back to dynamic content by clicking on the tab just behind the uh, information screen there, I can now select the output from the select. And if I put a comma and a second select, as you can see now on the screen, hitting OK, that'll allow me to save my flow and we'll go and test it and check what the output looks like. So I'll just put it into manual mode. I'll run the flow. And here we go. So we, we took our original array, which had these four objects. Using the select statement, we've turned those four objects into four names. And then using that union expression, we now have just the two unique names, which ultimately is that first array that we see here in this call. Now, if I go back into edit, I'm just going to quickly rename this action so I can remember what its purpose is. So this is our unique names. For my next step, I'm going to use another select action. And the purpose of this select action is to create a new array using the original array, but I'm looking to combine both the name and the type. So if we have a look at this uh, array here quickly, we have name, which is John Doe, and type, which is work phone. I want to create a new array that's called, or has keys, John Doe work phone, Jane Doe home phone, Jane Doe work phone, and so on. And the value will be based on their number. So again, with the source being set to the array as the input, I'm going to keep the key value uh, screen here. And this is where I'm going to use another expression. And this time, it's the same as before. It's the name expression. And I'm going to separate this block here with a hyphen. Click back into the map here. 
and type in another expression, but this time for type, as you can see on screen here. And so that will create the two blocks required in order to combine the two keys from the above array to create a brand new key value. And then for our value here, again, using the expression, I want the telephone number this time. So as before, item, uh, brackets, question mark, square brackets, single quotes, and then number. Now I'm just going to rename this quickly and call this our um, combo, combo keys, that'll do. And I'm just going to go ahead and save and test this so you can see what the output looks like. So if I just expand the combo keys action we have created, you can see the original array and now you can see the new array. And that includes the combination of both the name and the type of number. Now the next thing that I want to achieve is that this particular select action has created an array of objects. So each of these uh, key values is in a separate object and I want to flatten this so that we end up with them all within one object. So unfortunately there's no easy way of doing this but using a combination of expressions I'm going to show you how we can do it in just one single action. And the important thing to notice here right now as you can see, we have the closing square squiggly bracket, comma, opening the squiggly bracket, and ultimately want to remove that from all of the all, all of the objects to, to flatten it. So we're actually going to com convert this into a string and then back into an array in our next action. So into our edit, I'm going to go into my next step, and I'm going to use a compose action. Now we need to get the expression for combo keys because that's what we're going to use as part of our new expression that we build. And the way that I do that is I insert the dynamic value here and then I click on it. And then with a couple of uh, lucky clicks of control and C, I should then be able to paste it. There we go. So I'm just gonna get rid of that uh, expression block and then we'll start working on this expression here. So I need to remove these squiggly brackets and the at sign and then we can start building up our expression. So the first thing we want to do is we want to turn this into a string. So I'm going to use the expression join with an open bracket and then a comma and we're looking to join this on a comma. So you put the comma in single quotes and then you close off that expression with a bracket. So now that we've joined those objects to form a string separated by a comma, I want to remove those squiggly brackets that I spoke about early on in that earlier step. So this is where we're going to use the replace expression, if I could spell it correctly, there we go. And again, an open bracket. I'm using the end button on my key to jump to the end of the expression, and then a comma, and then the first parameter is going to be based on the string that we're looking to replace. If you remember, I said, it would be the squiggly bracket, comma, squiggly bracket. So we put the double quotes in and we have the closing squiggly bracket that you can just see there in the corner of my screen, a comma, and then an open squiggly bracket, which you can see on my screen. And then we go to the end of that expression, another comma, and what we want to replace it with is a single comma. So double single quotes, put in a comma to the end of that expression, and then if I just move my mouse out of the way there, the closing bracket, and that completes that part of the function. So you can see there, we're looking to replace all instances of the closing squiggly, comma, open squiggly with a comma. And we're nearly there with the expression. The final piece is to convert this into JSON to ensure that any of the escape characters are correctly formatted. And so we put JSON at the beginning we put a opening bracket and then we go to the end and put a closing bracket and hopefully if everything's okay, when we hit okay, our expression will save nicely to our compose action. So that'll give us a brand new compose action with a flattened array. Now the only final step you have to do now is to ensure that 
once we've created this that we put a couple of square brackets around it and that will finish off our new array that we've created. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that and call that my new array. And you can see there the final square brackets that I've placed around the expression that I've just created. So now the final piece of the puzzle is to create our brand new array based on all the work that we've done previously. So again, we're going to use a new step. On this occasion, again, I'm going to be used using a select action. Um, I'm just going to quickly rename this to our um, repurposed array. And as an input, what we're looking to do is use the unique list of names. So we've got this unique list of names here, and uh, we're going to use this with a combination of our new array to build our repurposed array. So using from, um, we're going to use the unique names as an input. And then when it comes to a key, if we just quickly remind ourselves back on the call, we're looking for the keys name, home phone, work phone, and mobile phone. So I'm just going to insert those first of all. So name, home phone, work phone, and mobile phone. And then we'll start building up the expressions here. So the name is rather straightforward because it's based on the unique names within this input. And so therefore the, the expression for this is simply item. Now, when it comes to the home phone, we've got a slightly more complex uh, expression. It's a very much a dynamic expression, but the first thing that we need to start with is this new array. So like before, I'm going to insert the dynamic content, click on the, the content uh, block here, use control C to copy, close it, and then back into my expression builder. And hopefully I should get the expression, which in this case I haven't. So we'll, delete that and try again. Uh, so back into my dynamic content here, I want to get the new array, a couple of control C's in the hope that I get to copy it. There we go, we've got it this time. So I can just get rid of that block and I need to remove the at sign. So because this creates an array and the, the I say this, the new array creates an array with a single object, um, we need to now get the first object. So if I just put in the word first with an opening bracket and then a closing bracket, uh, and that will allow us to start querying those new key value pairs that we've created. Then what we're going to do is insert a question mark and the open and closing square brackets. But this time, rather than putting in single quotes, I'm looking to concatenate or join the name, which is based on this input, and this new key value, which is home phone. Because you remember, we've created a new array that com combines those two as the key names. So for, for our expression here, we're going to insert item with the open and closing uh, brackets there. We're going to put in a comma, single quotes, a hyphen, because remember we had an, a hyphen in our new key name, and then the word home phone. Now, all being right, let's just have a quick look here to make sure I've got this correct. I've missed out a very important feature in this uh, expression, the word concat. So there we have concat. I need my open bracket. There's my first parameter, my second parameter, and I need to put my closing bracket at the end of the single quote, like so. So if you, if you missed that, I missed out the concat, which I've now inserted. And we have, within that concat, we have item, a comma, followed by the string dash home phone. Now if I hit OK, that should save. Now I'm going to open up that expression again in the expression builder. My little tip for copying fast is to use shift and end, but you could use control and A, or you could use your mouse. I'm going to hit control and C to copy back into our expression a value here into the expression builder and I'll paste that in and this time rather than home phone I want to get work phone and then if I go into mobile phone 
you've probably guessed by now, I put in mobile phone and I can hit OK. So that's the end of the build of the flow. I'm now going to save that and we'll go and test it. And if we just quickly remind ourselves, we started with the following array. We could have had this as a second array, but I've actually built this using a select and a compose and the union expression. And we're looking to turn the results of this second array into an array like so with two objects containing John and Jane and their home and their work and mobile numbers. Jane will have three numbers. John will just have the one work phone. I'll test that. And within a matter of seconds, the flow has run. And if I jump to the bottom, you can see here the input is John and Jane. And then John has a single work phone number and Jane has all of her numbers, her home, work and mobile. Now, part of the next test that I want to do is I've actually got a separate array stored in a text file, a rather large array. So on the call, it mentioned that there were potentially up to 3000 records that needed processed as quick as possible. So I have about a thousand on here, some with three numbers, some with two, some with one. Um, there's about 2,500 uh, individual uh, records on here based on the different combinations. I'm gonna change this array now to read from, a, from this OneDrive file, load up the array and see how long it takes to process. So we'll go into edit and I'm going to use the get file action or get file content. And then I'm going to go ahead and select that file, which I know is in a particular folder called temporary. And there's our file. Now in our compose action, where I currently have the array that we're using for testing, I'm going to use the expression JSON because I need to uh, make sure that the file content is correctly formatted into dynamic content using that tab that I can see behind the scenes there and selecting file content. And selecting OK. I go ahead and hit test and this should of course load the file and repurpose the array. So the file's been loaded. It's stepping through all the various actions that we've got. The flow has run within a matter of seconds and if we look at the repurposed array we can see all the unique names which is about a thousand and then we can see here that Zanetta has a work phone. If I scroll further down, we have examples of Lelwyn with three telephone numbers. And if I scroll further down again, we've got examples of Cleavy with just two phone numbers. So today's demonstration is, has shown you how you can avoid using an apply to each entirely when building a new array. And if I just go back into actually, if I go if I go back into the the history because that is. That is interesting to watch how it steps through. You can see the original array that we had here. The select action turns that array into a list of all of the names, even if they appear more than once. The unique names takes that original array and turns it into a list of unique names using the, the union. The combo takes the original array and it combines name and type. So Zanetta work phone, which we can see here, Zanetta work phone and our telephone number, but that's in uh, an array with multiple objects. And of course we want to flatten that array. We then go into new array, which allows us to flatten that array by using a combination of the join expression, the replace expression and the JSON expression. And so now you can see we've got a single object uh, and that's why we have to use the first expression in our next action later on. And then finally, in our repurposed array, you can see we take the original array of unique names and then we apply that to our new array design that we're looking for. So a lot to, to take in there, a lot to learn, some good examples of the select action, how to use compose, how to use union, I hope you found that useful and you may be thinking I've watched this video before you're probably correct I did have to re-record so this is a learning experience for me too and thank you very much for your feedback and your patience while I recorded this second video I hope it's as good as the last and uh, as always please sure please make sure you like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching have a nice day cheers